everybody welcome back to my channel my name's Rachel and this is Stitched Up so I'm up in my sewing room today and the reason for that is because um, husband and son are home both downstairs watching TV and yeah we've got a little new addition to our family who is causing absolute chaos um, yeah we picked up a little beagle puppy a few days ago and he is just so cute and gorgeous but like all puppies he's into everything and I will introduce you at some point but not in this vlog there's a couple of little sneaky pics of him if you want to go and check out my Instagram but I'll put a couple of little pictures up here so you can go and have a look but yeah um, he is just causing chaos in this house at the minute Minute. he is almost 11 weeks old and um, yeah it's like having a baby again and um, yeah so it's been a bit mad I will say over the last few days so yeah so I've come up to my sewing room and it feels ages since I caught up with you all so I hope you're all really well and looking at my last video it was it was a couple no, almost two weeks ago that I last filmed a vlog and um, yeah I wonder if you've been wondering what I've been up to but um, not a lot really to be perfectly honest um, this week I've been off work which has been really lovely and um, I've done a little bit of sewing which has been nice and we've also been away for a couple of days we had a trip over to the Brecon Beacons which is sort of mid to south Wales and that was really lovely although the weather wasn't too good but uh, never mind it was really nice to have a break and uh, yeah and then we got our cute little pup so it's been a busy week and um, yeah I hope you're all well so today I am going to be showing you my September makes and I've actually got a fair bit done, more than I thought I would, to be honest. If you remember my plans video for September, there was quite a number of the things I wanted to get done for my daughter because she's going on holiday later this month and she'd asked me to make her a couple of things. So I have done some of those and some of the plans that I had for myself, I've done as well. And yeah, I'm pretty stoked that I've managed to get more done than I thought I would. So I've got, let me just count, one, two, three, four five six seven seven things yeah seven things to show you so that's pretty impressive one isn't finished yet um and one is a bit of a dud but you know that goes with the territory doesn't it so let me start by telling you what i'm wearing you've probably seen this before because i'm wearing this top so much at the minute but this is the maria denmark Kirsten tea and um, yeah it's a free pattern so I will link to it down below if you've not seen it already and um, yeah I made this out of this lovely jersey that I got from Rena from Facebook so I'll link to her as well if you want to go check her out but yeah I wear this a lot with jeans it's just really comfy yeah it's not very glamorous but you know we're not we don't want to be swanning around in pretty dresses every day do we as much as I would love to live that lifestyle unfortunately I don't so let's start with we'll start with the dud okay so if you remember in my plans video for September I said I was going to make the Cynthia Rowley for Simplicity 1366 which is this pattern here and I was going to make the top and if you remember I had some leftover fabric that I was going to effectively twirl this and I did do that and here it is it's not finished yeah it looks really boring doesn't it but the reason why this has turned out to be a little bit of a dud is because I mean to be fair it's okay um, I haven't hemmed the sleeves yet and I've not hemmed the bottom but um, the reason it's turned out to be a dud is because of the neckline if you can see that neckline I've used bias tape satin bias tape to um, to do the neckline and I really don't I'm just not happy with it at all I mean yeah it looks pretty rubbish inside but I don't like that you can see the stitching and I always find with these kinds of with these kinds of tops that don't I mean I don't particularly like facings either but I always think that when you've got this sort of slinky fabric to have the stitching line showing I just I don't know I mean let me know what you think I have French seamed this inside so you know it wasn't a quick make to be fair it's all French seamed inside even the armholes look are all French seamed so I did take my time over it but I'm just not particularly happy with I mean if you look at the 
if you look there you can see it's sort of pulling a little bit and I just think that I should have lengthened my stitch length I think that would have been better so yeah so I'm a bit I haven't fin as I say I haven't finished it off because I was just a bit disappointed with that but um to be honest the sleeves are just a little bit too narrow as well um you know if you look on here obviously the sleeves come down to her elbow and they are quite wide but in reality I made the size 14 and while it's loose on the body um the sleeves are quite narrow I mean I don't know if you can really really see but that's not quite that's not a very wide sleeve is it so I think what I want to do because yeah I do want to make this again and I want to sort of persevere with it but but I mean even on the pattern look if you look at that pattern picture there to me that looks a much wider sleeve so I think I'm going to have a bit of a play with it if you don't French see me obviously it's a really quick make but I think you know it could be a really nice top and I've learned that you know when I am using bias tape to finish a neckline that I'm going to have to widen that stitch length to try and avoid that puckering and just to make it look a bit neater but also I'm going to have a play with just deepening this sleeve as well because I would prefer a much wider sleeve on it as it is I just think it looks a bit frumpy so yeah so that's the dud so we've got that one out of the way so the next one that if you remember I'd got that gorgeous lobster viscose cotton viscose cotton or viscose linen I think from like so amazing and I bought it earlier on this summer and I wanted to have a go at the Lauren Guthrie um, top now from her book. I can't remember the name of it. The yoke top, that's it. And I actually got the pattern in, I think it was Love Sewing Magazine a number of years ago. I think it was when Lauren had just brought her book out after doing the, um, the Sewing Bee. And yeah, I hadn't um i didn't have the instructions so somebody on the amongst the comments did very kindly offer to send me them and i'm really sorry i can't remember exactly who it was but thank you so much um i had so many comments on that video that when i went back to, because i was actually going to say yes please send me the instructions and i couldn't find the comment and yeah anyway i thought you know what i'll just have a go and see but yes whoever it was please just yeah make another little comment below because i would love to have a copy of the instructions because i really want to make this top again so let me just get the top and i will show you how it looks so here it is here is the lauren guthrie yoke top um in this beautiful gorgeous lobster viscose linen i really like this fabric it's gorgeous i wish i'd bought more of it to be honest but i did buy it with the intention of making a top and it's got this really lovely um neck band here which is a shaped neck band which comes up quite high and obviously it's sleeveless and i have just used the self fabric to make a bias bound sleeve finishing again i think no i haven't french seamed it i've just overlocked it inside um it's got a little bit a few little pleats across the front now i'm not sure if on the original pattern you're supposed to pleat this or whether you're supposed to just gather it it wasn't very clear on the um the the pattern pieces because obviously i didn't have the instructions so i've just um pleated it but i'm quite happy with how that's that's turned out so you've got a yoke at the front and then at the back you've got this gorgeous little button-up detail of the yoke at the back um, and yeah it's just sort of hip length now inside if I just turn this inside out you can have a look and see because the yoke inside is supposed to all be um, concealed if that makes sense and I've done a good job of that on the front I've managed to conceal it so I used the burrito method I think to do that um, and that's worked out quite well but the back because I had two two pieces of each back piece I ended up um, having to try and figure out how to create the button band and that was really quite difficult so I sort of fudged it a little bit but um, and it ended up where I had to overlock the bottom bit there to make that as neat as I possibly could but to be honest I don't think I've done bad considering I had no instructions to follow at all. All I had were the pattern pieces. Um, I think it's just a really lovely little top and I'm so proud of myself for being able to construct something that is fairly complex. Um, you know, 
it's not a straightforward easy top is it let's face it so I think you know to construct something without having any instructions at all is a bit of an accomplishment so yeah I'm quite pleased with that now the only thing about this top is I cut out the size 12 and graded out to a 14 at the hip and I would say it's actually a little bit it's it's well it's quite wide on me I know it's not supposed to be fitted but it it, it does come out quite wide under the arm so I'm just going to take it in just a little bit I will put some pictures in of me with the top on so you can have a little look but um yeah I do think it's just a little bit um a little bit big but um but yeah I really like it the buttons that I used on the back are just sort of plain white clear clear sort of white buttons that I had in my stash basically my husband um wears white shirts as part of his uniform and um, he gets a replenishment of his shirts every year so when he throws out his old shirts I just the fabric isn't really something that I would use because it's like a poly cotton it's not it's not very nice and, it's, and they're all white obviously but um, the buttons on them are, are great there's loads of buttons on them um, and um, yeah I cut off all the buttons and keep them and use them fairly frequently in my sewing so so that's uh, that's always a good thing so yeah really really happy with this top um, this was quite precious fabric and I did have a few head scratching moments because I didn't have the instructions which panics me a little bit because I'm thinking I don't want to mess this up because this fabric's so nice and I don't have any more of it but um, I'm really pleased with how it's come out don't know how much wear I'll get out of it now the weather's turning obviously it's quite chilly in the UK now but um, with a cardigan and jeans I think I'll probably still get some wear out of it over winter and I'm looking forward to wearing it next summer with shorts that will be lovely so that's my next make make number two so moving on to a couple of things that I've made for my daughter so if you remember she had bought some seersucker fabric in a blue and white pinstripe from Walton's Fabrics which is my local fabric store and uh, yeah she wanted me to make her a shirt dress so I decided on the Alex shirt dress from Sew so Over It, I'll put a picture here because I've made that before for myself a couple of times and she's tried it on and I know that fits her so I um, showed that to her she was quite happy with that and uh, yeah here it is so this was to say this is a shirt dress this is such a quick make and I really do really like this pattern so we've essentially got a fairly soft collar um, with button down front it's got two patch pockets on the front and to be honest Making this shirt dress, the hardest thing for me is actually the patch pockets to get them sort of lining up and get them in the right place. I don't think I've done too bad a job there. Um, and it's got a yoke on the back, as you can see, with a little inverted pleat in the back there. It's got a shaped hem. I don't know if I can just bring that up to show you. So you've got a shaped hem, which is dipped down at the back compared to the front. And... Uh, then it's got three quarter sleeves with a little um, tab and button just there. So all in all, this pattern is actually fairly quick make. And I think I got this made up in about three or four hours from cutting it out. So yeah, really, really happy with how it's turned out. Now, she does want me to make a belt in the same fabric. I do have enough left, so I'm going to get that done for her so that she can um, have this ready for her holiday later on this month. But the what I would say about this pattern is this may be just me but I could find nowhere in the instructions where it tells you to interface the collar and dependent on your fabric choice I would interface the facing part of the collar which is what I did with this and it's certainly what I did with my other makes as well I've made this before um, a few times I've made it as a shirt dress and I've made it as a shirt and when I've made it as a shirt dress I have used a poly cotton where I still interfaced the, the collar and I also used a cotton lawn as well and I've used a cotton voile from sea salt to make a shirt and in each one in each of those fabrics I've always interfaced um, the collar now I did the same with this and I just think it needs it and the same with the button band um, it doesn't tell you to interface the button band at all but we all know domestic sewing machines are not always the greatest at 
being able to create good button holes and if you haven't got that extra sort of support and stiffness in your button band trying to create a buttonhole you just yeah it's just going to make the job a little bit more difficult isn't it so I'm a bit yeah I don't understand why so over it haven't mentioned that maybe they have and I've just missed it but um yeah I would always advise if you're going to make it interface the under collar of your collar so it just hangs a bit better so yeah really happy with how that's turned out did worry a little bit initially that it looks a bit night shirty um I guess because of the fabric choice but it was her choice not mine I haven't tried it on myself because um I have amended the pattern slightly because I'm a fair bit taller than my daughter so I have reduced the length of this pattern by probably about a good three or four inches and I've also reduced the length of the sleeve a bit as well because I know she wanted that a little bit shorter. I haven't actually hemmed the bottom yet I've just overlocked it don't know if you can really see that because what I'm waiting for is next weekend we're actually going down to Leicester to see her for the day and I'm going to take it with me get to try it on so I can see where it needs to be hemmed um, because I know she, with her being she's 20 she wants it short so yeah so really happy with that one and um, if you also remember she chose some really lovely bird print crepe fabric that she wanted a kimono making and I had this pattern in my stash um, Simplicity 1318 which is this one here and I did do a video um a vlog sorry i did do a vlog filming the making not the making of it but i did a pattern review of this so i'm not going to dwell too much on it but here again is the lovely kimono that i made her um out of this really lovely fabric it's really nice actually this because it's although it looks fairly directional it's not um the the birds on it are sort of all all over the shop really so uh yeah so I've got that done for her as well and um, yeah she's going to be um, all set for a holiday and I also said that I was going to make her the Vanazza swimsuit by Friday Pattern Company. I'll put a picture of that just up here and um, what I've actually done is I have made a start on that and I have used some lycra offcuts that I've got in my stash before I use her good fabric to to make the final version so that I can do a twirl of it for her mainly just to see what the fit's like um so I have got the top made but it's downstairs and I'll, I'll show you it next month and um yeah and I am just going to finish off the bottoms later today so that next next Saturday I can take the twirl down for her so that she can try that on if it fits okay then I can make it out of the the actual fabric so I'll, I'm hoping to get that done um, in the next couple of weeks and then I'll film that before she takes it off with her on her holidays to show you so so that's that one and then I there were another couple of things I said I was going to make that I haven't got round to yet but as always every time I get swayed by new patterns that come out or some fabric takes my eye out, out of my stash or whatever and I think do you know what I, uh, I'm going to make something else so and that's exactly what I've done this month there are three other things that I've made that weren't on my plans that I thought you would like to see so the first one is a sweatshirt okay and yeah I've got quite a lot of jerseys in my stash mainly from buying them out of the Colville fabric sales because yeah they're just so addictive aren't they but um, yeah I've got loads of jerseys scubas French terries all sorts of that kind of stuff in my stash and on the Colville Facebook page there's loads of people that um, are really sort of like addicted to the Ellie and Mac patterns it seems and it's it's something that I've never really bothered with much before and I think it's because um, some of the fabric combinations that they use on their illustrative um, pictures shall we say are always a bit garish and I find it difficult to actually see the design and imagine my own fabrics in in that basically so but um yeah there's been a few that have sort of tempted me a little bit and now that I've got myself a little puppy and soon he's going to be wanting to go out for long walks which I'm really looking forward to um I thought you know what I need some nice nice hoodies that I can use up some of my fabrics um, in my stash from to create myself some hoodies for those dog walks which I'm looking forward to so the first one that I had a go at the other night is this one here and I'm just fiddling about with some threads so you don't see them 
So this is an Elliot Mac pattern. And this is, I think it's called the Be Creative hoodie. I'll put a picture of it up here. Of, of what help that will be for you as I say because some of the uh, some of the pictures are really quite difficult to, to sort of see um but yeah basically it's a simple hoodie um with a, a waistband a bottom I don't know if you can see that there and then it's it's this is a fairly new pattern I think it only came out a couple of weeks ago and then it's got like this um a seam across the top here where you can do some color blocking and i have used and it's the same at the back if i just show you that there so that's the back as well and then you've got this really where well, you've got two options you can either create this sort of cowl neck collar which is what i've done here so it's like a fold over at the front um, and then you can bring it up around your neck look so it keeps you a bit warm um, which is obviously lined and or you can just use a hood as well it has a hood in there for the pattern as well so I chose for this version to do the 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 cowl neck now the fabrics I used the black fabric here is actually is it a French terry no it's a fleece it's not a French terry it's a fleece fabric that I got from Colville and it's really lovely it feels I don't think it's cotton on the on the outside here um, it feels more like a poly. A po it's got some poly in it, definitely. But inside, obviously, it's really fleecy. I don't know if you can see that, but um, but yeah, really fleecy, really warm. And uh, yeah, this is a lightweight scuba that I've used for the top part in this really lovely sort of blush pink and black and grey floral plint. Plint? Plint? print and uh, yeah I think that's um, I think it goes quite well so I use black for the cuffs and I made I can't remember what size I made I think I made a medium I think it was a medium that I made and the only adjustments I made to the pattern was I added on an inch to the sleeve length and I added two inches to the hip and the sleeve length is still too short for me. I do have really long arms, but I'm finding that um, this particular sleeve length is just still uh, just a little bit too short, and uh, which is really annoying because I really love this top. But I've got loads of this fabric, so I could easily make some more. But I'm definitely going to make this hoodie again because I like it. Um, and I've got loads of fabrics that I could, you know, play about with the colour blocking, etc. And it's just nice and snuggly and great for sort of casual afternoons in um, these autumnal days. And um, but yeah, I'm I'm going to have to alter the pattern again and add on at least another inch. I need at least the depth of the cuff again to make the sleeves the right length for me. So uh, yeah, so just bear that in mind if you do have long arms. But otherwise. It's a cracking little pattern to be fair and um, again I'll insert some pictures of me wearing it so you can see what it looks like on the body so to speak but um, but yeah very quick to make it probably took about an hour and a half something like that altogether so that's the good thing about these jersey makes you know you can run them up on your overlocker and um, they're very very quick it does have in the pattern option to put some piping in along this seam line here as well but I mistakenly thought they meant proper piping and actually no they don't mean that at all what they mean is that you use some of the fabric and just basically fold it over wrong sides together very narrow and um, press it and then you insert that to create like a faux piping effect but I didn't want to do that with the scuba because I thought it would just be too thick and the same with the fleece to be fair I thought the, the fabrics are too thick to do that and it would just be a bit bulky so I didn't bother with that but I just left it as it is but yeah really really love that and um, I'll definitely be making that again and then still on the Elian Mac theme I made another of their hoodies and this was after seeing the lovely Ashley Riley I will link to her Instagram page where you can go and look at some of the things she makes she is one of the admin team for Colville Fabrics and she makes loads and loads and loads of things she's just I don't know how you think I make loads but honestly Ashley makes she just far outdoes me in the the sewing makes department she doesn't have a YouTube channel but she does put poster pics on um, her Instagram page so I will link to her down below so you can go have a look but she's made some fabulous stuff from she does a lot of Ellie and Mac um, but she's made some really great things and she'd made this hoodie in um, some gorgeous like raspberry ponty and when I saw her version of it I thought I really like that 
um, much more than actual the actual designs I'd seen on the Ellie and Mac website. But so I bought this one as well, which I think it's called the Undercover Hoodie. Again, I will put a picture of it there. I'm just wondering if you can see me because the sun's moving round and it's it's a little bit um, it's a little bit awkward, isn't it? Um, anyway, yes, um, it's, I think it's called the Undercover Hoodie and I decided to really go a bit wild with this because I've got these these lovely sort of more drapier jerseys in my stash and I thought it would be nice to have a go at creating a sort of more drapey, lightweight jersey hoodie out of some of those fabrics. So I went a bit bonkers and this is my version here. Now this is totally, totally off grid for me because this is not my normal normal style at all but again this is for dog walking okay this is not for entering you know most um gorgeous looking designer of the year or whatever so um yeah i'm not going to win any instagram fashion parades wearing this am i but i don't care this is about comfort and slouchiness and again this hoodie has got this it's got like this cross front and the clever thing with this is it's got a little pocket there as well so you can put your hand in that pocket um, and you can sew that up if you don't want the pocket again it's got the pipe I've, I have created the faux piping here I don't know if you can see that and I've used these two jerseys out of my stash now the grey one if I bring it in so you can see that one this is just a lovely cotton jersey it's a lightweight cotton jersey that I got from Fab no I didn't get it from Fabworks I got this from Colville Fabrics last year sometime I think and then this one the purple one is again it's the same type of jersey but I got this from Birmingham Rag Market I think this was a pound a meter so um, it's got a hood which again is lined with the same fabric inside but again you can create the cowl neck for this if you wanted to and then you've got options for sleeves you can just do a full sleeve or you can do a two part sleeve which is what I've done both sides if you can see that yeah and then I have used some pink ribbon in my stash to create the cuffs and the waistband at the bottom and again I know you can't see it very well here but I will insert some pictures of me wearing it for you to have a look the back is just plain as you can see so yeah it's a little bit bonkers a little bit not my usual style but again this is the size medium and I added on an inch and a half to the sleeve length for this pattern and I also added on an inch and a half to the bottom of this pattern and it's actually much bigger than the other jumper and I'm not sure whether that is just my fabric choice or not but oh, it's it's definitely bigger the sleeve length is perfect on me for this one but the actual length of the sweater itself is probably just a little bit too long but never mind um so yeah so I've got a couple of hoodies there really like that pattern still prefer Ashley's version to mine but um but yeah it's it's a good way of having a look if you've got loads of jersey fabrics that you want to use up and you want to try and blend them together it's a good way of looking at how you can mix and match the jerseys that you have which goes together quite well and I love grey and purple together I think it's my sort of favourite favourite colour combination really so yeah so that's that and then the final thing that I have to show you that I have made this month is not quite finished yet which I'll explain shortly but I've had this pattern in my stash for ages this is quick sew k4104 and it's this one here so this is a lined coat with no fastenings and you've got an option of a collar or not basically and there you can have welt pockets or not so this is the back and the line drawings if you can hopefully I don't know if you can see those there hopefully you can and um, I'll put a picture of the pattern in there so you can have a look now I have had I bought some fabric from Sew Me Sunshine I saw her post this I think it was on Instagram a couple of weeks ago and as soon as I saw this fabric I just thought oh wow I have to have that so it is this beautiful beautiful velvet and it's black with a metallic sort of scattered design throughout in 
metallic colours of it's got silver and pink in there and a little bit of blue as well so I thought it would just be perfect for that coat and the one that I wanted to make the version I wanted to make was this one here which is just a simple um collarless version with welt pockets in so if I show you on the back it's this version here but if you can see on the front it's got like a seam across the waist and I didn't want to include that so I have omitted the seam I had to fiddle about with the pattern a little bit to, to take that out but I've, I've taken the seam out and um, yeah I made size wise what size did I make I think again I did a medium I did a medium top graded out to a large hip and it's almost finished so this is it here now it's not this isn't a very good you're not going to see it very well I've even put one of my own little labels in which is great isn't it but look at this fabric how amazing is that it's just gorgeous hopefully that is focusing for you but it's so so beautiful it's gorgeous isn't it so this is fully lined and I've just lined it with some black satin lining now um, it's proper lining fabric um, and I was going to say the only thing that I was disappointed with was I actually prefer the patterns where you've got like a faced a faced lining inside so that you've got the outer fabric in, in sort of like the first part of the facing if, if that makes sense so that if any of it flips out you can um, you know that's what you see rather than the actual lining fabric I have understitched all the way round as far as I could go um, but if what I would have preferred I wanted to use a really sort of vibrant hot pink lining fabric but because I knew that it didn't have a facing and yet I could probably have adapted the pattern to create a face to create a facing that would attach to the lining but to be honest I just wanted to get it done and um, I just really couldn't be bothered and that's just lazy of me isn't it but we all have those days don't we where we just want to crack on and get something done so um, yeah I would have preferred that and I'm a bit disappointed that they haven't incorporated that into this pattern but never mind so because of that I just chose plain black because I thought at least if that flips out you know over the top of the outer fabric it's not going to look too bad um, Welt pockets, yes, it, well it has bust darts in, I don't know if you can see those, I had to lower the bust darts by three quarters of an inch and they hit me perfectly. The other thing I like about this pattern is it has elbow darts in as well and I've seen that in a few of quick sew patterns, don't know if you can see that there, it really might not come up, but there is an elbow dart just there and these are great because it just means that when you're bending your arms in these these garments that they it moves so much better so it's a neat it's a very simple little touch that you just don't see in ready to wear garments and i really like it welt pockets now i don't know if you can see that there's my welt pocket these are rubbish i'm going to say that truthfully now they are absolutely rubbish um i've got a little pucker at the top there and these are hand stitched down it's got another one this side as well where is it there we go there's the welt pocket that side they really aren't very good but fortunately um because of this fabric choice i think they blend in and i can get away with it but honestly i just cannot do welt pockets i've done them a few times now on a few different things and i cannot get them perfect i think it's something that i'm really going to have to just practice um and practice and practice but I wanted to include them because I just think having pockets in um, in a coat is really important um, and I do like well I do like well pockets um, I like them rather than side seam pockets I think they're much nicer but yeah I just I can't I'm rubbish so what can I say um, what else can I tell you about it it's just got a pl uh, has it got a seam down the back yet yeah, a center seam down the back not really sure why I think that could have been omitted um, it's not like there's a split in the bottom or a vent or anything now this fabric itself is actually fairly drapey so as well as it being lined I've also interlined it with just some plain if you can see that just some plain cotton and um, this is just cotton poplin some grey cotton poplin that I picked up really cheap I think it was a couple of pounds a meter and I've used that to interline as well to add an extra bit of weight 
to the coat and um, to make it yeah just to make it hang a little bit better the other thing that this coat has got as well is it has back, back darts which are shoulder darts which are just up here along the shoulder again I don't know how much you can be able to see that but there's one there and there's also one on the other side and I love that in a pattern as well because I have a very sort of slender um, neckline around here I've got a long neck and, and I'm very slender at the top even though I'm quite broad shouldered and um, I always find that tops coats jackets they're always gape a lot around the neckline and I always have to go quite small at the top and then grade out and when you've got those sort of little darts just at the top here it just means that it just pulls everything in a little bit around your shoulders to make that fit so much better um, that's fantastic I haven't finished this yet I have finished the sleeves so they're all done but the hem obviously isn't done because I've just shown you how it's lined inside and the reason it's not finished is because it's actually a little bit big and um, where it's too big is here the shoulder depth this bit here so if I just put this on and I can show you I love how it fits on me so it's got as you can see I've, I've left it three quarter length sleeve I really like that length on me I think it's nice it fits really nicely but if you can see there's the shoulder seam my shoulder is there and the shoulder seam is there so I'm gonna have to take the sleeve out and remove that depth basically because at the minute it just hangs off my shoulder and if you look at the pattern it's difficult on the one with the black and white one but you can see there the, the, the sleeve is supposed to actually sit on the shoulder head it's not a drop sleeve um, but on me it's the sleeve is there and it's creating this extra bulk here so what I need to do is I need to bring that shoulder up there I've now pulled that up so that the sleeve head is actually on my shoulder and then I've got all this extra fabric here so yeah it's a bit annoying because it's all lined now but I am going to have to do that because it, otherwise it's just it's too bulky here and it doesn't fit right so but otherwise I love it and I want to get this done because I'm wanting to take it with me to the KB sewing retreat that I'm going on at the end of this month if you remember I went back to one in May and had such a great time and yeah I'm going again later this month so I'd like to take this with me yeah so I've still got the dress to make for the gala dinner for the sewing retreat I want to get that done next and uh, yeah that's it really so um yeah so I've not done bad have I for September I'm really pleased with what I've got made and um, yeah there's a few bits and pieces I need to finish off if you remember as well one of the other things I said I was going to make was the fibre mood top I can't remember the name of it now but I'll put an, I'll put a picture of it in here the one I made before out of that coral double gauze that I got from Higgs and Higgs well if you remember last month I showed you this fabric that I got from Ray Stitch in London and I was going to make another version of that out of this fabric and then when I I was actually going to do that I've got everything out ready to do then I realized I don't have enough of this I put the pattern pieces on and no matter how I move those pattern pieces about I cannot get that top out of this fabric so pretty annoying but this fabric is not 16 inch wide I thought it was and it's not um, it's quite narrow I don't know if you can see that so I'm not exactly sure how wide it is but yeah that unfortunately will not make that top so I haven't got that done but I'm quite pleased with what I've got done all the same so my next video is probably going to be my plans for October and I am not quite sure yet what they're going to be there's one or two things that obviously I know that I'm going to be making but I've still got a few things to be thinking about really so leave that with me but um, yeah I hope whatever you're doing and whatever you're up to you are having a fantastic weekend and um, yeah I'll see you all again really soon hopefully take care guys bye <laughs>